Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Let's start building the 650 scale Enterprise D. That's right, it is time to start building the 650 scale Enterprise D and in fact, you may not know this, but we actually have two of them to work on. Two of the 650 scale Enterprise Ds to work on. So we're gonna be working on them side by side at this point in time. I'm not sure how long down through the process, we're going to be able to work at both at the same time, just because they take up so much space. I think that once they get assembled, they're going to be too big and take up too much space to be able to work on them side by side. But we'll see just how far we can get working on them in a bit of assembly mode type of way. So in this first update, we're going to be looking at the saucer parts. We don't have all of the parts yet. For the secondary hull, there is a key armature piece that is still on its way, so we're going to leave that for a later update, but we're going to start working on preparing the saucer section. So we want to get the inside light blocked. I'm going to be working on the phaser array, some stuff that needs to happen on that. So let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're there, click on the notification bell so you don't miss a single update. If you're interested in purchasing a Tesla and would like to support this channel, you can find a referral link in the link section of my YouTube page. So it's now time to get started working on the 650 scale Enterprise D projects. And unlike the 1400 scale, I don't have to go through and open up all the windows and all that kind of stuff because they are already done as part of the way the kit is made. We are gonna start working on the top saucer section. First thing that we are gonna to need to do is get it prepared to work on the wiring, which means I need to open up this entire phaser ring and replace this white resin with clear resin so that the phaser effect shines through. You might be asking, well, there's already holes for LEDs. Yes, but I'm using a higher definition phaser effect and I need this entire strip to be clear. So we're gonna get working on that. Before I do that, I am going to prepare the inside by washing the inside out, make sure it's nice and clean, getting the black primer and the white primer on. So that's gonna be my first go-to there to get the light blocking and the light uh, refraction done inside. And then I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna clear out the entire phaser ring. I'm gonna do this in sections because you don't wanna lose the structural integrity of the part. If I was to go through here and clean out this entire ring, then uh, the structural integrity of the part would be compromised and the only thing supporting the entire middle section during the process would be this small section back here and that would risk breaking this section back here. So we're going to take it in quarters. So I might do this quarter and this quarter, clear those out, fill them in with clear resin and then go through and do the process again on the other two quarters. That way we're not losing any structural integrity in the saucer during the process of working on it. So I'm gonna flip this over. I'm gonna get this washed out and get some primer on the bottom. First step complete, I have masked off the area where the bottom saucer is going to join the top saucer so that there is a clean join seam there. Mask that off with some liquid mask. And I've also just gone over the edge of the saucer here so that when I am doing the light block coats on the inside, I'm not going to get any overspray. I'm just going to tape off the edge now. Uh, the extra masking on the liquid mask is just so that if I don't get the tape right, I'm uh, protecting that edge here. So I'll tape that off. I will do a layer of uh, adhesion promoter, then a layer of black, and then the layer of white. And then uh, we'll be able to move on to the modifications of the saucer part. I've got all the light blocking done on the top saucer. I'll show that to you in a moment, but uh, I wasn't going to do the light blocking on the bottom saucer until after I filled in these gaps on these window frames. But it is such a nice day here at the moment. It is actually 10 degrees above freezing uh, Celsius. So I'm going to take the opportunity to get at least the adhesion promoter coat onto these so that I can open up the big garage doors and air the place out. Uh, so I'm going to get that done. I wish I would have done the tape on the top saucer. So if you're doing this, use the tape on the top saucer. Just cut a five millimeter wide strip and put it on that ledge. Uh, the uh, liquid mask was such a pain to take off in this instance. I must not have put enough on of it. But uh, this is taped off. I will get the adhesion promoter on this and the other bottom saucer while I can get that garage door open and the place aired out really easily. 
Both top saucers have their black coats and a single coat of white. The white, it doesn't look great to look at here, but this is perfect just for disputing the light within the model. I'm not looking for a perfect on the inside here. The bottoms have their first black coat on. Uh, if I was to hold this up to the light, you'd see a little bit of areas that need a second coat of the black, and I will get that on here shortly. But black coat, first round is on both bottom sections. I'm going to move over now to working on getting the phaser array taken out for both of the top saucers and we'll get those filled in with clear resin. So started working on uh, clearing out the phaser strip on one of the saucer tops and I'm using this here. It is a 3 16th chainsaw sharpening stone for Dremel. It is five millimeters exactly the size to fit into these five millimeter holes. And so I am uh, creating a line just between them to give me, myself a guide. I'm not sure if I'm going to want to open it up the full width of the phaser strip or just the five millimeters. We'll see. Um, but I'm going to open it up at least the five millimeters for now, and then I will clean it up. And then obviously it'll get backfilled in with the clear resin so that this is a uh, very good light emitting strip underneath the phaser strips that will be glued on top. So this process is taking quite a long time, but it seems to be working out very well. I'll show you uh, when I get a quarter of this done. I've got two phaser array sections cleared out. Now I did say I was going to do a quarter of the phaser array at a time. However, I've downsized that a little bit just to help maintain the structural integrity of the part that much better. So I've got two sections cleared out with two holes worth of space in between that is still there just to maintain that structural integrity. I'm going to now go through and backfill this with the clear resin, allow that to fully harden, fully cure. Uh, evaluate that process and then I'll go through and continue the process on the rest of the phaser array. This is the first time that I am uh, doing this method so I, I want to do a smaller section make sure that it's all working properly before I go through and clear out the entire phaser array. So I'm going to get that filled in and we'll see what the results are. Resin has been poured into these two sections. Now I am going to have to do one of these sections at a time which is actually a good thing that I'm doing them in the smaller sections because it's really hard to get them to be flat so that the resin actually solidifies in the entire area of the phaser strip. So I'm going to have to uh, fill in some of these sections with a little bit more. I'm not going to worry about that quite right now but I want to show you what this looks like from the other side. So I'm going to pull the tape off on camera here. Hopefully that goes all right. Here we go. Pull that off and yeah, makes for a nice clear surface. It's not perfectly flat, but I am going to be putting the piece on top of it. So as long as it's pretty close, we're going to be uh, in good shape. I can peel this one off too. There we go. It's hard to see the tape on this surface. Peel that off. Yeah, and we're just going to do this all the way around. So here you can see me opening up the phaser array in the small sections. I started out by using my battery powered Dremel. However, it was running out of battery very quickly and I was going to have to recharge it, so I switched over to my plug-in Dremel. And you know what I found out is that that one just tears through the material so much faster. So it does give a bit of a rough kind of edge on it, but I'll go through with the battery-powered one uh, and do some fine cleanup work just before filling it in with the clear resin. As you can see, I've got large amounts of the phaser array opened up. So what I found worked really well was to use the plug-in Dremel, which has much more power to it. It just ate through these much better. And then I came in and cleaned these up with the uh, wireless Dremel, which just gave me a little bit more control. So a combination of the two. 
So these are done. I did make a mistake right here. I forgot to leave the hole in between. So that's gonna be a bit more challenging to uh, get rid of this section once I get the resin in, but I'm sure it won't be too much of a problem. Now, this was the first saucer section I've done. So the other three will go a lot easier now that I kind of know exactly what it is that I'm doing with this. So I'm gonna get some resin put into these spaces. We'll let that cure uh, really well before we ever look at opening up the spaces in between. Here's a quick look at the reason I decided to go with the smaller sections rather than the larger sections. I have to try to keep each section that is receiving the resin as flat as possible. So underneath I have a roll of tape underneath there and my tape dispenser to hold everything exactly where it needs to be to be as flat as possible. But as you look, they gradually get higher and higher as you go around. So using the smaller sections gets as much of it as flat as possible. So the current section that is right here has been poured a few hours ago. I have the uh, witness cup over here and uh, it's starting to gel up. So I could possibly move on to the next one without fear of it running. Uh, but I do want to leave it a little bit longer. And once that uh, hardens up a little bit more, I can move to pouring the next section. So a little bit of a sm slow progress. I could use the solar res once I get it, but um, I, that's hard to get here. And I don't want to uh, waste it on the phaser arrays. I really want to use it on the windows to eliminate the uh, amount of time that the windows are going to take to do. So a little bit of a slow process. We'll see how much of it I can get it done before this video goes out. Uh, but um, I may only get a few more of these done before this video goes up on YouTube. We'll see. That section I showed you with the saucer on its back has cured up overnight. I'm going to pull the tape off. Maybe it's easier to do that with my fingernails. Pull it off like this and it's good to go. Now this is taking about 12 hours per section to uh, cure up enough to move on to the next. So I'm clearly not gonna get this done in this update. So I think I'm gonna end it there. And then uh, in between updates, I will get these areas filled in and then we will move on to the in-between areas. And by then I should have the solar res in my hands so that we can get working on the windows. I'm also waiting for some parts to come in for the bridge and observation deck and uh, hopefully we'll be able to look at those in the next update as well. And that's gonna be it for this update on the 650 scale Enterprise D projects. We didn't quite get the entire phaser array done on that first one, but I'm gonna be working on that in between updates as it just will take forever to get that phaser array filled in with the clear resin. So hopefully I'll have those spots that we've drilled out finished for the next update and we'll continue from there. So I hope that you've enjoyed this update. If you did, make sure that you hit that like button if you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet. Why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. But for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.